Welcome back. Now we have the delegates of the International Education Fair. Um, they're here to tell us about the International Education Fair. <laughs> <laughs> we have Victoria Kimoto from St. Joseph's University, Grenada, and Ghani Gunewadana. Did I get that right? Yes. Right. Well done. Um, okay. So welcome to the show. Thank you Thanks. for having so, us. So what exactly is the Education Fair about? Okay, the <coughs> Education <coughs> Fair is about uh, bringing schools that are outside Nigeria to the Nigerian students so that they get an opportunity to choose where they would like to study. Okay. So the fair itself has participation of different schools. I'm going to read off a little bit. Okay. Uh, you have St. George's University, which I represent. We have Northumbria University. Uh, we have the Royal Agricultural University. And, and also have the University of Roehampton, where I represent, and also University of Hertfordshire, University of uh, Northumbria, Cardiff Metropolitan, and uh, University of uh, Plymouth and University of Swansea. So okay. I majorly UK university represent. Yeah. Mm. So what it does is give the opportunity to a student who wouldn't have uh, the opportunity to look for these schools. And we bring the, the schools together. And the student gets a chance to interact with the representatives and be able to know if they are going to be a to make it to join the schools and immediately they can find out what their next steps can be and they get counseling as well. Is there any discount? Discount for the schools? Um, for the students that come to this <laughs> fair? Yes. That if, I, if I have a daughter and she comes and um, would, would she get a discount? Yes, there are certain 10, type maybe of uh, scholarships available, like especially with our university, we uh, try to provide um, a scholarship for the uh, master students and also for a scholarship, uh, some scholarship for the PhD students as well. So it's okay. actually, it's a credit merit basis scholarships. So what you need to do is you come to the education fair, you just have a, a conversation with us and we would be able to let you know how to apply for these kind of scholarships. So I know most of the Nigerian students, they looking for these kind of scholarships. scholarships. So we are happy to help mm. them oh. how to get these kind of scholarships because sometimes it's not easy to find these kind of scholarships. Okay, aside aside the um, helping them, counseling them on how to get scholarships, what else would you be telling them? Okay, okay, we also tell them like how to choose the right course because most of the time, especially the teenagers, when they finish the high school, they get confused about what they want to study in the future. So it's mainly about how to select the right course because we don't want to them to start and then you know, decide, okay, this is not the right course for them. So that's the main thing. So it's a kind of guidance and advice because we work mm -hmm. in the university and we've been doing this job for a while and we know the industry, how it works. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of advice, isn't okay. it, Victoria? Um, at the same time, we, I'm a representative who's from Kenya and I understand the Africa market. So you could have a student who wants to study something that is not marketable even if they come back. Um, I represent a school or I'm a former student of a medical school. So if a student wanted to join med school, one, it has to be a calling, and they have to be strong enough to make it through med school. And as much as we would like the students to attend, we take them through a rigorous process of interviewing and seeing if they can manage. And we also look at the opportunities if they decide to come back home, because we know that uh, students study and they finally want to come back home and they have to see board exams, mm. they have to take some rigorous um, a year working in a public hospital to be able to work in, in their own countries. So we look at opportunities that translate to what yeah. Africa to the environment. needs. Mm -hmm. will, will a student get admission on the spot from any of the universities, universities and colleges? Yes, we've, if they bring their qualifications, especially whatever the qualification they have with them, it's, it will be an opportunity we can assess them there and then, then we would be able to tell them, you know, like, where can he actually get into, which level he can actually get into with that qualification. So what then after that next stage is with the MOD, they can submit an application form and then they, they can get an admission, uh, like, you know, within the next day or so. So that's mm -hmm. the kind of process we expect students to bring the qualifications, whatever the certificate with them, okay. what they is got. Is there a specific fee to, for, for this? You come there, is there a charge? Um, the fare is free. Um, there's no cost to attend the fair. Mm -hmm. And what we ask is the students to be prepared to 
come with their qualifications. You don't mm. necessarily have to come with originals, but mm. at least come with them so that when you're having the conversation, you're able to get to a point where we are just left with you doing the application. Mm. What, what level of qualification do you accept and what level do you do the school accept you into? It, it is depends on uh, which level of qualification they got. So as an example, if someone got a wire qualification, they can get into the foundation program easily. Mm -hmm. And if they have a degree uh, in, with a classification like you know merit or distinction, then they would be able to get into a master's program. And again, someone who's looking to get into like PhD programs with their master's, again, then we would be able to assist them how to get into the PhD programs as well. Okay, I'm yeah. aware that it's one thing to get admission. It's another thing to get visa to to these countries where these universities are. How far do you go to assist a student who has got an admission to get student visa? visa? Student visa wise, um, obviously we would be able to give them advice there and then about what kind of documents they require to get visa. But obviously in the same time, MOD is as a representative, they would be able to help them after, because after a few days time, we will be leaving back to our own countries. But after that, they would be able to contact them regular basis and they, would, they will be guiding them step by step until they get the visa. So it's, a, it's not a one day thing. It's just like going through like a couple of months. Am I yeah. right? And um, Yeah, because I think I missed it. So if I missed it, maybe some viewers missed it. Where exactly is this fair taking place? Um, the fair is at different venues. So I'll just go through the venues themselves. Um, in Wari, you have Jubilee Conference Center. In Wari? In Wari. Okay. And the dates. Okay, and I apologize for the it's pronunciation. Okay. I'll, I'll correct you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, and that's happening on the 23rd of January 2016. Then in Lagos, you have Echo Hotels and Suits. That's on the 25th. Then we have Abuja, we have Trascop, Hilton Hotel on the 26th. Then La Meridian, uh, Ibon Hotel. Mm -hmm. you. Okay. That's <laughs> and that's on the 28th. And Port Harcourt, you have uh, La Meridian or Gay uh, Place mm -hmm. on the 30th. Okay. And on these days, um, most of the, <coughs> we are there until five o'clock and we should be able to um, meet the students and talk to them. Is there and a website we can go to get, to get these details for those that didn't pick up the, the venue? Yeah, the yeah. It, you just need to go to www.ief.ng. IEF.ng. IEF okay, so we can also tweet that, yes. tweet that for our viewers. Um, now, you finally get visa, you go abroad. Now, what this, this schools, a lot, of, a lot of complaints in schools that students have is that when they get to schools, um, when you find me, you, you're year two, year three, you're unable to work to even start some kind of internship sometimes, or they don't get a student visa, not a student visa, a work permit, or yeah. sort of, to even work during the school years. Now, what do you, do, do these schools that are part, part of this, um, um, this group, do they help these international students for that? Um, yeah. I can talk about yeah. St. George's. Yeah. Okay. St. George's is a little special. It's a med school, and most students who are in med school do not have time to work. Okay. And we are based in the Caribbean, which is uh, an island, Grenada, okay. uh, that is just next to Trinidad, Tobago. And Grenada is not an economy like studying in the US or the UK. So the student who makes it to do med or veterinary studies would have to study throughout the years. Okay. And in the last, um, so when they first go in, they're in Grenada, uh, for the first two years of clinical studies where they're in the classroom, they are based in Grenada or London. Uh, they choose where they want to be. And then the last two years of clinicals, they do them in the US or the UK. And what it does, it gives them an, op an opportunity to work in first class hospitals within their clinical years. And by the time they finish, they graduate, they have the US board exams already sat and they can practice in the US or back home. Okay. And if they're well stationed or they've done well in their clinicals, they can join the residency programs where they become cardiologists, pediatricians. So it is an opportunity that yes, there's a sacrifice with them not working, mm. but when they finish, they will be accomplished medical people. Yeah. What's the cost implication of um, attending any of these um, universities or college? It is, it, right? yeah, tuition, tuition fees, yeah. It is depends on, inst uh, based on the institution. So as an example, um, Victoria might be able to help you with the how much costing for the study medicine uh, related courses for us, it's going to be around twelve to thirteen thousand pounds per year. So it depends 
on the course that you choose. If it is a master's course, it will be around one year. So it will be about 13,000 pounds plus cost of living. So if it is a degree program, uh, again, again, similar amount plus it's multiplied by three years plus cost of living. So uh, like going back to the previous one, obviously we do help them to find part-time jobs. As a University of Roehampton, we have a special service called UNITEMS. So we encourage them to come and take part in part-time jobs because that will give them some experience. Because end of the day, when they come out from the university, we don't want them to have like an empty CV without any experience. So we would like them to get some more experience by doing some part-time job while they are studying. And their visa allows them to work mm -hmm. as well in UK as a student who's studying a degree program or master's program, which allows them to work around 20 hours per week. That, that's good. I'm, uh, I'm aware that when a, ch a student gets admission into some schools, um, there's one on this list, I can't remember the name exactly, but a friend of mine is over there now in the UK and is trying mm -hmm. to get out of the hostels. Mm -hmm. He has found a family friend, and to stay with that family friend is a problem because the school is insisting he must continue to maintain that hostel and pay the fees for rent. Mm -hmm. Is there a way where you can assist a student who is interested to save costs, where he finds a family member willing to accommodate than, you know, forcing the students to pay the cost of those accommodation within the school? Um, for St. George's, uh, we only request that they spend their first year on campus because it's their foundation year. And if they don't get it right there, they don't perform well after. After that, um, the students get housing outside the campus, in which case we've had um, students who come together and they get a whole house, which is cost effective for their parents because um, the fees in St. George's is about $65,000 eh? a year. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And, and that's for the med years. Ah. Hey. <laughs> and, um, I, I must be alarmed. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That, that is a good Please point. Forgive me. However, <laughs> um, we do offer scholarships, and scholarships about uh, if you do the commonwealth scholarship, you can get 100% of the tuition covered, okay. which is the whole 65000 How Let many years is this Let course? me take this call. Good morning. Hola, are you there? From the UK. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I just want to make a little bit contribution. Yes. Um, I think the idea of um, foreign university to come to Nigeria is not really ideal because we need to do more about our university because why are they coming to Nigeria for? Because they want to want us to come and spend money, our money. In UK right, or thank you. It's easy for you to say. You're in the UK <laughs> already, all right? So thank you. Let's see if we can help those oh, in Nigeria. Yeah, all right, so as we're saying, um, the tuition, so hopefully mm. they can get some scholarships, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many years is like this? <laughs> I'll just break it down for you. Um, pre med costs about 20,000. And um, for each year you're in school, you need about um, $10,000 for living expenses and tickets. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> the med school years, um, 65,000 times four. Uh -oh. And then uh, if you do get the commonwealth scholarship, that's covered. So okay. you only Let need me we, have round, we have to round up, unfortunately. So we, for more questions and com comments, they can go to the website. Can you tell us the website again one more time, please? Yes, it's uh, www.iefr. Dot ng. Yes, IEF.ng. So go there to get more details on the education. Do Thank they you have so Twitter much, handles? Victoria. Do you have Twitter oh, handles? And the phone number is on the screen to call you. I think there's a phone number. Is there a phone number on that? On that? You want yeah. to say to that? Is there a phone number you'd like to reach uh, Um Yes. Um, we, you know, we, all right, it's on the screen. So okay. our viewers can look at it, all right? Thank you. So we're going to take a quick break now. When we come back, we have a special guest that went to Kilimanjaro. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. A few moments, months ago, Mrs. Remy Abiri made headlines as one of the oldest Nigerian women to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. This 49-year-old mother of five. Hey. 
In fact, I need to make Ole because uh, it's not ah, easy. It's not I'm, easy I'm, part, I'm part of Shocked me. everyone. You know, just keep quiet. When she woke up, when she actually went on this mountain with all the your view welcome <laughs> and all the sense of envy. <laughs> Let us welcome Mrs. Remy Abbey to the show. Welcome to the show. You can call us on 070 806 You can tweet to us at TVC Connect. That's TVC two C's. TVC Connect. And kindly hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Before we get to the Kilimanjaro, I am very is now very secondary. Mm -hmm. Kilimanjaro is secondary. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have five hey. children. Children. <laughs> and you look this up. Five. And you, the first one is 27 years old. And you're only six well, years younger. Just, just five years younger. Just okay. Good you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm ashamed. <laughs> ah, God. <laughs> I'm not eating again. I'm not eating again. Sorry, ah. could it be good genes or you do anything special? Oh, very good question. I think it's a combination of both, actually. Um, actually, I'm 50. I was 50 last year. <laughs> so I, I climbed, at the time of that report, I climbed Kilimanjaro when I was 49. That was my first time. Mm. And four months later, I climbed it again when I was 50. So oh, I wow. did it twice in a space of three, four to five months. Jeans or do I work at this? Um, I actually work at it, to be honest. Um, but then I think I'm blessed with good jeans as well. Hmm. Um, my i've always prided myself in walking in the mornings although i haven't done that for a long time i i sometimes i have months where i'm very motivated to do it and i have months where i just feel like sleeping in the morning too i mean we've all done it we, in the morning you just don't feel like getting up you know i've i but i'm a very active person i like outdoor tell. sports i <laughs> i sometimes cycle um, I mean, my climbing the mountain says it all, really. I like, I like, I like. Please, can you stand sports. up so they can see your figure? Yeah, sure. Your figure is hot. Hmm. Hey! <laughs> 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 like, are you yeah, jealous? I am jealous. <laughs> I cannot lie. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I am jealous. Yeah. 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 No, 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 as a, approaching my um, 40s and 40s, my late 40s, I realized that eating well was very important to health, mm. you know. So I, <sighs> I started looking at what I was eating. So I was making sure I was eating enough vegetables, enough um, less, I, I mean, we like meats. I love suya. We all love I don't even suya, like meats. chicken and everything. I, mean, I cut, meats. I cut down on that. When my daughter told me, Mommy, do you know that it takes 28 days to digest meat? I said, what is in my stomach for 28 days? Come mm. on. Mm. You know, and um, I just started reading about general good eating habits, okay, nutrition, and things like that. So, Have you ever been baked before? Never. Yeah. People, I went to the University of Ethan. People see me today, although, to be honest, I think I've never gone past the size 12. And even at that, I was like... I, it, that was just a phase in my life. But people see me and say, wow, what, you still look like this? You used to be big and you fair. But I used to have big cheeks. I think that was my trademark. So people look at me and say, wow. So I'm, I've got, I used to have big cheeks and then I, I, I'm an African woman. I'm you know, you know we have a... <laughs> we, 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 we have a rounded, Forget curvy about that ground nut, way of being. No more ground nut in this but, um, Oh, I love ground nut. That's my favorite. Oh. That's my we favorite. Hear that I've been plenty this morning already. <laughs> <laughs> you have a 27-year-old child. Yeah. So I have four girls um, and one boy. My first daughter, she's 27. My second is 23. She'll be 24 in a few months. My third is 21. Um, she's a girl as well. <laughs> my fourth daughter, Kumbi, she's 20. And then I have a son. Um, like you had children back those, to back, two, two I've, years, I've years, years <laughs> back to back. Was, was how old is no. the boy, please? My, my son is 15. He's 15. Okay. So yeah. for 15 I don't know why you are even, because yeah. you are even fatter than me. You see your arms compared to Ah, look at the arms. They are my other hands. They are mother <laughs> Jesus' arms. And then you are abusing me. <laughs> I am because you are 50 already. You are 55. Ah, ah. Yeah, see I'm this girl. I still have hope. <laughs> I can, I can, I can, I can't, 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 I is eating right. I think we tend to eat a lot more carbohydrate than we should sometimes. Mm. I mean, imagine I eating pounded, yeah, a big 
bowl of pound yap at no, night before you go to bed. I did. Can you do that? Do that? Night. And then as Again. we grow older, our metabolism is not as fast. It slows down. So it slows down. Let me, let me break so the we need to, to you, start Ms. being more we, active. We know all these things. But we do we not do it? You know, I eat leaves in the morning, I eat in the afternoon, I eat apples, everything. I eat healthy, but guess Let's what? It's not coming down. I'm constantly eating, just like eating carrots. To break carrots. Are you working? Are you, are you doing? Are you are you keeping active? Because we live a very <laughs> we live a very sedentary life. I mean, when I was working on the island, I get in my car. My driver drives me to work. You go to the office. You sit down in front of a computer. You have media. And when you get to a certain age, you have people that do a lot of things for you mm. in the office. Somebody's getting your food. Somebody's getting your paper from the photocopier. Somebody's doing mm. all these things for you. Get back in your car. You're in traffic for two hours sitting mm. down. The last thing you want to do is go and work out when you've sat for mm. two hours in traffic. True. You get home. And somebody's putting your food on the table. Mm. I mean, this is the Nigerian way, isn't yeah. it? It's you very sedentary. Yes, I do. But I made it a point of duty to not to say no to all those things. Mm. You know, I oh, I like to be honest. I like driving, but not in traffic. So I still maintain my lovely driver, Dan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I I get up and do things myself. I'm always walking around my office. I never sit down for too long in front of my computer. I get home. We have to switch over to the Kilimanjaro. <laughs> <laughs> you you went on Kilimanjaro well, from to. Nigeria, as based in Nigeria. In Nigerian yeah, Nigeria. yeah, yeah. So I've always wanted to climb mountains. I've always been an adventurous person. My mom, my mom is West Indian, and she always I'm just jealous us you. when we're young to oh. to be outdoors and do to explore adventure. So I've always been an adventurous person. So I've always wanted to climb Kilimanjaro. And one of my one of one of my friends mentioned it that he would like to do it as well because I never found anybody within our visit who wanted to do it as well. So he said he wanted to do it. And I said, well, let's get people together. So in the end, we only, we, we, I, the only two people showed interest. So in June last year, um, we went to climb Kilimanjaro. It was um, How do you climb Kilimanjaro? an amazing experience. No, like let me, we're, we're gonna take, it, I'm going to take a quick break because I want to show the pictures and I think a video of you because I don't even know where do you start from. Is it from your <laughs> driveway? Or how do you drive to Kilimanjaro? I don't even get it, but let's see these pictures. We'll be right back. Um, we've got a long way to go. did about five and a half hours walking yesterday, especially in the dark, which was very difficult. Halfway into the walk, it was very cold. It was extremely cold and we didn't expect it to be that cold. So we didn't take the kind of clothing that we needed. I'm not an outdoor person. I've never camped out in my life. But this was really jumping in at the deep end. I kept asking, is this the route back? Maybe I'll just stay here on the way back, then they can take me. But something told me you can do all things and since I can do all things through Christ, I kept forging ahead. And this morning I'm ready again to push on. Going by yesterday, I mean, today they say today is tricky, which means that there's gonna be, a, from what I understand, there's gonna be quite a bit of climbing and climbing using our bodies as opposed to just our legs. So um, I think for me, it's just to get through it. And that's the whole idea. I'm uh, still a bit anxious about summit day, but a woman's got to do what a woman's got to do. So. Seven days of real grueling experience climbing 
high rocks and making it through rainforests and the rain. You know, it, it seems daunting, but we're all ready for the task and um, we need your support. We really need the support of the whole of Nigeria, especially manufacturing companies to help donate products. We have a website, www.kindreni.com. Oh, goodness me. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, ask Mrs. Abiri, what the heck was that about? <laughs> Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. So we know you went on Kilimanjaro. Now, mm -hmm. why? Why? Okay, the first time it was to see how far. I love challenges. I like, I mean, you know when people say, oh, Remy, you're 50. I like showing people that at this age, can at, women can do anything they want to. They just have to put your mind to it. You have to decide and then focus on it and tell yourself you can. There's one, one thing I've realized, and one of, one of the experiences I had in the mountain was that no matter what you, what you want to do, if you just put your mind to it and believe mm. you can, you do it. So that was my reason for climbing. The second time, so that was, I wanted a challenge. I mean, people yes. said, oh, people have come back on the second day. It was a seven day climb. People don't make it. This, I had all kinds of reasons why Kilimanjaro was, might be impossible for someone in my, of my age. So I, I love that challenge. And I said, no, I'm going to do it. And I did mm. it. In fact, my sister Seven said, yes. my sister said, who's, she's lived in England all her life. She's married to a Caucasian. She said, Remy, all my friends have done it. Hmm. The second time was for a cause. Um, I wanted to do something in the way of give back to, to society. And I thought, um, a friend of mine was showing me some footage of the IDB camps. And I thought, wow, there are a lot of women and children in these camps suffering through no fault of their own. Hmm. And they need help. What a better way than women women of a certain age mm. to draw awareness to this cause by women of a certain age climbing a mountain. And if they're prominent women, you know, it will all, yeah. all the more reason to draw cause to the, uh, awareness to this cause. So I put out a video and some of my friends said, yeah, we're originally supposed to be six, but at the end of the day, four of us went. Um, the the um, wife of the governor of Ogun State, Mrs. Funcha Musu, she said, Remy, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. um, my friend who's a pastor in Redeem, she said, yeah, let's do it. And then a colleague of mine, an executive of IBM, Uzo Mwani, she, she decided to go. So four of us put so our skates on and we decided. How many have you made it to the top? Ah, good question. Well, we, we actually made it, to, we all made it to the base, the last camp before the top, but for for, for reasons, for health reasons, two of us actually got to the top and the two decided that they would stay on the base camp. Now, um, for the climb, how did you guys manage seven whole days? Did you, were you eating? What kind of foods did you pack together? What, 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 what were your backpack, backpacks? How did you manage seven days? Or did you go fasting? Seven, seven days, no, we didn't fast. We ate really well because you need the energy, you need the food to keep you going because it's a lot you are walking about seven to ten hours every day hmm. and it's not just walking it's climbing. real climbing huge rocks and you know and and there are boulders everywhere sometimes it's raining it's freezing cold it's misty sometimes you can't even see see the next three steps hmm. so it's you need a lot of energy so you're fed well we we they the tour guides organize cooks that follow us on the trip wow. and um we had a, we had two specific cooks but we had a team of 50 people with us on the mountain. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Can, can I ask, so with that yeah. climb, you used it to raise funds because you said it was to help. So the IDBs. IDBs. Yeah, so it was because actually, I don't know why you didn't just, didn't just go and give them money. <laughs> Did you get money <laughs> climbing <laughs> that mountain? Okay, so it was actually, so I, I specifically said, we specifically agreed that even though we say safe funds, but what we were really looking for is products. We didn't want to get into the controversies mm. of money. Mm. So we decided that we wanted products. So we wanted manufacturing companies to donate products that could be useful for women and children. You know, and that was it. And yeah, we've, we've got uh, some interesting donations and we haven't been to the camp yet. Uh, we, we just returned before Christmas. We decided at the end of January, once we've collated every, all okay. the products, we'll go back to the camp. And um, How was the descent? Is it easier oh, going yeah. down? Oh yeah, 
Oh. Anything coming down is much easier. It's like going up a split, pa, pa, uh, st some staircase and coming, coming down, down is much easier. Are there any major obstacles like uh, maybe you fell or sprained ankles? What, what were the challenges you faced? Well, when I was coming down, particularly, I, I, I sprained my ankle. Mrs. Amoso hurt her knee, so I couldn't wear my boots anymore. Oh. Well, I didn't sprain my ankle. My toes were hurting. I think I'd kick, kicked my boots on stones too many times. My toes were hurting. Both times I lost both toenails, my both big toe, big toe toenails. Oh. So this time it was just so painful to put the mm. boots on. So I had to kind of wear trackers and it took ages to come down. Like took, the seventh day it took like 10 hours. Oh. And by the time I got down, my, my, my ankle was that swollen. Oh, yeah. Did you meet? Uh, yeah, it was, Let me did you meet call any? Right it was okay. a pain. Ayamide, good morning. Are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, mommy, what you? Hey, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I'm so proud of the celebrity guest you have to be. I'm so proud of her. And I'm proud of her first lady in the good state. <laughs> yes, her excellence, I'm, also, I'm so proud of her also. So, I think this is the way to encourage the youth that we can do much better. Mm. Mm. So. Thank you. I am eating. Did yes, you? I, I need to ask a question. Did you meet any mountain lions or no. snakes? No. Or any no. animals there? No, a lot of people ask that question. They're no, and it's just too cold. It's too cold mm. on the mountain. Most and we don't. But have, there are mountain we don't lions. Have, no, no, not not in Africa. Not in Africa. There okay. were, no. There no. There's the only thing we see is birds. And you don't really, mm -hmm. I mean, the first time when we went, the weather, it was more of summery. So it was dry season, so we saw a lot more birds. But this time, it, it, and it, well, there were crows. There were crows that actually come down, take your backpacks, un undo the zip, and mm -hmm. take, take your mm -hmm. lunch. Yeah, I saw that happening. Mm -hmm. When I was told that it happens, I said, no. So one of our tour guys left his bag because he was taking pictures. And the, a crow came down, unzipped his bag, and took. Can you, Can you imagine? I, I was like Barrow. shocked. I said, Barrow. what? Yeah. These birds are so intelligent. Yeah, they know. They're so intelligent. Yeah. Okay, do you get so, familiar with the... Because with the, um, it was your second time. The first time, I'm sure it was strange. But the second time, were you familiar with the roads? Just, you know, climbing easily? No, we took different routes both times. Um, so the first time, we took the Lomosho route. And this, the second time, we took the Machami. And to be honest, I think my second climb was more difficult because... Um, it was rainy season. Mm. First time it was summery, you know, yeah. it, the, the, the ground was dry. This time you had to be much more slippery. careful because the, the it was slippery. And I don't know, if you see the terrain, I don't know whether they're going to show the pictures, but if you see the terrain of Kilimanjaro, um, each step you take, there's a boulder. Mm. Because, you know, m m mountains is erup an eruption, a volcanic eruption, mm. and boulders everywhere. Mm. So you've got to be really careful. One slip, you could hurt yourself really badly. Oh, so it, it was a lot difficult, a lot more Let's take this call from Olu Prince. Good morning, are you there? Hello, Prince, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, good morning. Good morning, go ahead. Yeah, good morning, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here, good morning. Go good ahead. morning. Yeah, I'm very proud of the celebrity you have on the house this morning. Okay. Okay, that was a very adventurous walk. How did you survive it, Ma? <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> Mind I, over matter. Yeah. <laughs> Believe in yourself, you know, and you can do it. Okay. Somebody just... I, I guess it's a challenge to the men. I'm also thinking of going on such trip right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should try to climb the Abuja to Abuja first. That's a uh, Zuma Rock. Yeah. Zuma Rock. Try Zuma Rock Zuma first. Zuma is not climbing. If you <laughs> miss it, then you can do it. Somebody has tweeted that he has climbed the Lumo Rock. The Lumo Rock can climb. Somebody has tweeted that he has climbed the Lumo Rock. Somebody has now tweeted. Somebody has tweeted and says, we haven't achieved, achieved our road to size 10, now mountain climbing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have to too. Listen, the road to size 10 thing, I'm still working on it. It's not easy, you know. The arms are still flying. We're trying, we're trying. Please take it easy. <laughs> I thought yeah, I'm says, I, I was going to get to size 10 by December last year. Okay. But I, I, I came down two sides. I'm going on the mountain with them. I came down two sides from 18 to 14 ish. To yeah. 10. So that's where I am right now. Do you so. really want to do it though? Yeah. You really, 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 really want to do it? Really Let's take that as a challenge. Let's take, let me take that on. All right. Really, I'm serious. You just, uh, but you have to want to do it. I want to. You have to believe that I can do it. it. You know. So if you do, yes. Yes. it's possible. Anything is possible. So I have somebody else so encouraging you're me. You're eating, <laughs> you're eating leaves. Yeah. I'm already gonna eat leaves already. It's yeah. leaves. Yeah. Okay, Kaya Hub says on Twitter that congrats, madam. You look really extremely good for your for your age. Everything 
good has a price. Mm. And mm. <laughs> Pearl says, don't starve yourself to hashtag weight loss or death. It's about eating right and being active. Absolutely. You know, eating, eating how is your you husband in all of this? What, mm -hmm. what, 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 what did he, did he allow, how did he allow you to go to Kilimanjaro the first time? Like, do you think you're going crazy? <laughs> <laughs> good one, good one, good one. Um, he knows I'm crazy anyway. <laughs> But yeah, he, my, my husband is very supportive, to be honest. He knows that when I put my mind to something, that I want to do it anyway. And I, he, he believes in me and knows that I would have done my research, because I did a lot of research before I did this. I mm -hmm. mean, who, who's done it before? What are the possibilities? What are the health challenges? I, 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 I did all that yeah. homework before I went. And I, I let him know that. And, and to be honest, the sport, because I've got five children, and they're all my cheerleaders. My husband is my cheerleader. So yeah, it's their support that got me there as well. Oh, so yeah, he was, he was a bit, me mm, you know that kind of thing you know but um at the end oh, of the day goodness. he's like my second climb was like yeah, yeah. you know he's like telling his friends like, like, we have to round up <laughs> a quick tweet speech anybody okay um, abidu yunusa says bravo 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 to the amazon Mama Remy, I hope the like of Auntie Yeni would follow suit. Absolutely. <laughs> That's, That's a challenge. Please tell him never. <laughs> I can't climb. I'm going to climb. I'm going to climb. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's really I'm positive. It's a challenge to do Thank something. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, I'm going to challenge. I'm going to challenge. It's been a pleasure. I only try to lose yeah. weight. I love Rosie her encouraged me to speak slower today, and you're encouraging me to stay healthy. So definitely, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be a change person 2016. Hello. Yeah. We can do it. <laughs> All right. Have a lovely weekend. See you Monday. Bye-bye. <laughs>